Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome back to New York City Concierge Explorers. Today, we're in the heart of the city, the very heart on Fifth Avenue near Rockefeller Center, and right behind me is the historic landmark of St. Patrick's Cathedral, the largest neo-Gothic Catholic cathedral in North America, built in 1879. St. Patrick's Cathedral was the vision of the first archbishop of the New York Archdiocese, Bishop Hughes, based downtown at old St. Patrick's Cathedral, covered in another film. It was his dream and his vision to build a large cathedral in dedication to the Roman Catholic Church and the Archdiocese here in New York, which he saw increasing numbers of Catholics coming to New York, as well as his vision of the history and development of New York City. St. Patrick's Cathedral opened and was finished in 1879. The first brick of the foundation lay from 1858. So it took many years to complete with also an interruption of the Civil War, but they were committed to the construction of St. Patrick's Cathedral and had several fundraising events, including 103 prominent citizens at that time donating $1,000 each. Also, in 1868, for more than 30 days, they held the largest religious gift fair and auction ever held in the world to raise money to complete the cathedral in 1879. If you can imagine, the city was actually three miles away in 1879. So this does have historic significance as the development of the heart of Manhattan and the city, which grew from downtown all the way here in Midtown Manhattan on Fifth Avenue. As you can see, there's still hustle and bustle and busyness even during the pandemic. The cathedral was built on former Jesuit land, Trappist monk land, and is one whole city block. Another interesting fact about St. Patrick's Cathedral is its location, very prominent in the heart of the city on Fifth Avenue, but also diagonally across from Rockefeller Center's famous World Atlas. So sort of symbolic in that the coincidence being directly across from something that is symbolic of the rest of the world, hence the largest neo-Gothic cathedral in North America. Also at the time it was built in 1879, the spires raising over 300 feet high above the building were considered the largest structure in Manhattan at that time in 1879. So lots of wonderful facts and figures and interesting bits of history of St. Patrick's. We're going to explore the inside and around the back as well. Thank you, dear friends. Around the back of St. Patrick's Cathedral on Madison Avenue is the Cardinal's residence, the official parish center, gift shop, etc. And you could also see the interesting architecture of St. Patrick's Cathedral, which really was influenced by some of the great cathedrals of Europe, particularly Chartres, Notre Dame, and many others, flying buttresses, famous stained glass windows, and you'll see when we review photos of the interior, all of the different arches of various saints dedicated to each one going across the interior of the cathedral, a replica of the Pieta from St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, and many other bits and pieces of world history pieced together really here to create this national and historic landmark right here in New York City and Midtown, dear friends, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Thank you.
When one enters the grand bronze doors of St. Patrick's Cathedral, one can see the awe-inspiring interior influenced from all the great cathedrals around the world, from Chartres, from Notre Dame in Paris, from Il Duomo Milano, from St. Peter's at the Vatican. The famous architect James Renwick put together bits and pieces and ideas to create this neo-Gothic revival style using Tiffany glass and some of the stained glass windows. Also, what's important to note that the interior of St. Patrick's Cathedral really consists of small naves or small little chapels devoted to various saints where one can go and pray and light candles. It is estimated that over one million candles are lit per year at St. Patrick's Cathedral, right here in New York City, dear friends, for, all, for everyone to enjoy.